Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Julian. I'm here to do my reaction video for season 7 episode 5 of Riverdale. This time the title of the episode is Tales in a Juggler Vein. And we're here, we're back, and we are ready. A little bit late, but we're ready for a new episode of Riverdale. You guys know Riverdale. It's on its last season. And so far, the, the first four episodes of this season have been pretty good, decent. I mean, not nothing too crazy. And we're kind of going back into what made Riverdale good in the first place because season one of Riverdale was pretty damn good uh is the reason why I continue watching then don't ask me why I continue Barchi that's why I continue uh and Joni uh but yeah I mean this season has been it's it's, it's doing great and I I am actually excited to watch this episode couldn't do it before because I had uh, a lot of other things to do around the house and also I needed to have a little bit of time off to do uh some other things to uh with my son so yeah that happened as well so anyways what happened in the previous episode um Archie was about to marry Cheryl thank god that didn't happen uh so it uh, and uh Cheryl suggested oh maybe you should write some of this you know love letters to or or poems uh to someone so close to you like Betty and I'm so excited that Cheryl in this timeline or Whatever it is, she's a barge shipper, as she should, you know? Uh, and since she didn't marry him, that means that also Shoni can happen. So I'm excited for that, and I'm excited for everything that is to come for Riverdale. <laughs> so I'm excited. I hope you guys are as excited as I am to continue watching and continue uh, enjoying my reaction videos for Riverdale. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys like it. Hope you guys continue supporting for more. And for now, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy. And without further ado, let's just begin with Season 7, Episode 5 of Riverdale. Here we go. <laughs> they are a moral scourge, gentlemen. And their creators, criminal degenerates. That's what the PTA should be talking about. Comic books. Not the mugses. And I believe I know exactly how to make that happen. Sure, sure, sure. Comics. That's what kills people. All these stories have been done to death. Aren't there any original ideas anymore? Says the teenager. <laughs> Bernie, you're a genius. He also what about wrote stories something like about that. Teenagers and high school. Oh, Pat what Thomas the doesn't fall? have any of those, right? Uh, Al says he doesn't relate to them. We can call it Homeroom of Horrors. Huh? You think so this will feel stone bite? Sure. No, we'll give it a whirl. It's good seeing him excited about writing. Where's my little tortured genius? I'm all ears. What's it about? Sports themed, because what's scarier than gym class? And it has a narrator, like all of my yell yarns will. Um, called The Key Keeper. I had one of the artists at Pep Comics do a mock-up. It's pretty <laughs> nifty, right? The niftiest. Yeah. Looks like a real charmer. Dilton Doily. Oh, no. Who is short, nearsighted, and uncoordinated. Me, that's me. <laughs> but Dilton couldn't make a shot to save his life. Come oh, on, Doily! Get your head in the game! How about you give him some actual advice, you know? Ah. Maybe you need a little motivation. What are Coach they gonna do? Coach Gates had the other players start running laps until Dilton sunk one lousy bucket. You're a dead man, Doyle. Oh, Poor dear man. Dilton. I'm trying my best. Why are you even here if you can't make one stinking basket? Just wanted to be part of a team. Then be the Aww. damn water boy. <laughs> okay, calm down. Like what Coach Cleet said. You gotta get your head in the game. So by the time the day shift found and released Dilton the next morning, Dilton had suffered a complete psychotic break. 
You know what? If we're gonna go kill, man. A let's do it. <laughs> man, you might say. Gotta keep my head in the game. Gotta keep my head in the game. Not a boy, Doily. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, that's a gruesome story. Oh fuck. Gotta keep my head in the game. Oh my god. My, my child. I like it. Me like it. Me like it. <laughs> Good for Dilton. People who are cruel to others get punished. People who have lustful sex get punished. Lustful sex, did you say? Mm. Tell me more about that, Druggykins. Oh, <laughs> not you. <laughs> I've got a tale for you. Yes. Oh my god, is she alive? Here? Sorry to bother you at this hour, ma'am, but my, my hot rod got a flat tire down the road. Would it be too much trouble if I stayed the night? That way, in the morning, I can call the garage and I'll, I'll be out of your hair. Sure, you want to do that? I already feel better. You won't There's in a not minute. There's much in this yeah. world that a strong cup of tea and a roaring fire can't fix. Inappropriate touching. Really? Of women. Oh, yes. Yeah. She's ravenous for it. Can't keep her hands to herself. <laughs> that seems like a dream for him. Wow. <laughs> or she's gonna be like, I'm gonna be expecting her. Is naked. That your granddaughter <laughs> yes let's get you settled shall we <laughs> he's he's excited <laughs> surely some rules were meant to be broken especially when the consequences might prove oh, to be downright Archie. titillating ew I'm sure i am happy to be here too <laughs> let me just light a candle no 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 why will we do that do best it's best done in darkness. I saw your granddaughter, I think, by the window. So what, what's wrong with her? Some kind of mental illness? Oh, Cheryl was once youthful and vibrant like any young girl. So wait, age. you, you. But she wanted adventure, and I couldn't help but indulge her. You think there is a mental illness, but yet he still. Archie. Archie. She took a trip to some well, this is just tropical a story. jungle. She contracted a rare form of leprosy. <laughs> leprosy? Horrible, uh -huh. terrible, disfiguring disease. <laughs> now she can't be around other people because it's so very contagious, you know. <laughs> oh, you say. But, oh, you say. I mean, you don't. How do you think those nails got onto that road? Oh, it was a trail. I did warn you. I gave you a chance to lock that door and be a good boy. After last night, we're going to be together forever and ever. Oh. Till death do us part. Oh, shit! <laughs> Actually, I'm liking these stories. Who can keep up with all the horny teens at Riverdale High? I mean, what else is there to do? Right. That's why God created high school. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think so. Where boys could chase Veronica. girls and vice versa. I mean, I understand. Yeah. I understand. I, mean, I understand. Here, a lot of people continue saying that I hate Veronica. I don't hate Veronica. It's just that her entire character for the last, I don't know, seven seasons, all seven seasons, have been about her and the men, you know, the, what, whoever she dates, you know? And I wish and I feel like she could be so, so much more. She can't keep herself, you know from dating someone, from going to relationship to relationship. She can't stand the thought of being five minutes alone. That's that's what annoys me, you know? Um, I don't think I speak only for myself. I think a lot of people don't like that about her, you know? Um, and I wish that... I, I really, truly wish that someone... I mean, I mean, the writers should know by now, but... 
Um, I wish they give her th that opportunity, you know, that in the 50s when it's something so dire, you know, to have a husband and getting married and blah, 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 for Veronica to actually be like, no, fuck that, you know? You could truly have made that happen, and they haven't, you know? So it's, it's more of the same. Veronica is the same two-dimensional character, and, like, that's it. You know, so. Sorry, I get bored. And this Veronica and Jughead, I don't know who the hell thought of that. For me, no chemistry. I'm going to stand by that. And also, it's because, like, Jughead and Tabitha, Tabitha make so much sense. And I don't, I don't, I don't understand why Tabitha is not here. Like, the 1955 version of Tabitha. Where is she? Like... What, she disappeared with the other version? What happened? He's so oblivious. Every school has one. The plain Jane with the ponytail mane. The but girl, my girl! The better yet, whom none of the boys seem to sick their sights on. Bl blonde Betty, you say, when she's one of the most interesting characters on this freaking show. I would like a new look, please. Oh, Aww. what's giving you the grin gold doll face? I just feel so... Are you doing a hairspray? Unseen. She's not gonna sing, right? All the girls at my school have bows and it's just like I'm a... a, a ghost. It's called the beehive. Okay. Beehive. Sounds sophisticated. Oh, it is. So we tease up all your hair, put in some extensions, and then roll it all up into a dome, just like a hive. Let's do that. You're gonna get all the attention you've ever wanted, and then some. Okay. What the heck? If it's good enough for the Parisians, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Smart girl. You're gonna look so chic. <laughs> the next day, She's so adorable. A new Betty showed up at school. It got everybody talking. Yeah. All the girl. boys went oh, look at Archie! Gaga. Yes! And as for the girls, well, they were positively gangrene with envy. <laughs> Just spray, girl. The more hairspray she put in her hair, the heavier and more shellacked it became. And the more the boys noticed her. Can I carry your books to class, Betty? Oh, no. Hey, thanks, Julian. Oh, hey, uh, Betty, can I take you out this Friday night, please? Oh. Oh. Okay. I'll think about it. That's so cute. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I swear, in all my years, I've never seen a cuter couple. Oh, me too! She's a cool cookie now, isn't she, Pop? What do you mean, now? Betty's always been a peach. Thank you! Thank you! Oh you my really god, look at that! Dirty. Hey, I'm a lucky cat. Oh, what happened? Betty, is everything all right? Whoa, Betty! Uh-oh. Something's not. Betty! 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 Oh, no! You Anything, killed Betty. Maybe the town's coroner will have the answers. You so killed young. Betty. Oh my. What? What have we here? Ah, oh, no. ew! No. Turns out Betty's hair attracted more than just boys. Oh, a you. black widow spider had crawled into her tresses that night and laid a batch of eggs in that ginchy hive of her. Ew! Beauty is only skin deep, and vanity kills. Okay. But at least they were together, Today you know, Barchi. only skin deep? Yeah, what if we did a flip of the classic teenage love triangle? One in which the girls don't go at each other's throats and cat fight. Now you're singing my tune. When has that ever Presenting been your tune? my fourth <laughs> and final story of the evening. A, the girl next door. Always, or B, always. The rich starlit socialite. No, no, but no, no, in a no. Rare stroke of mad mm -mm. genius. Archie chose we don't want C, that. both of the above. <laughs> so on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, Archie takes Betty out. Oh, and on goodness! Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, <laughs> he takes out Veronica. When are you going to drop that vapid airhead? Oh, please. I don't, don't get razzled. Why shouldn't I? Having to share my bow with that smelly tomboy? Don't I make what? you happy? Of course you do. Then tomboy? Why are I enough? You're my favorite. Sure, such really? a player. 
<laughs> oh, my baby's kissing. The other two men. How do you do it, Andrews? But the good ship Archie was headed for an iceberg. Valentine's Day, which this year disastrously landed on the Sunday. So, Veronica, <laughs> who's the lucky guy taking you out for Valentine's Day? Sounds like someone's been playing you two for fools. Exactly. Lesbianism, join. <laughs> that rat fink. <laughs> Neither of you can be my date on Valentine's Day. Why not? He's taking Cheryl? Because I'm taking my mom. Right. You see, it's. <laughs> it's her first Valentine's Day without my dad, and and well, are you she guys needs believing me. these? <laughs> Look at you. Guys can understand. <laughs> Who is he taking on, on a but date? But when Sunday night rolled around, Betty and Veronica decided against staying in and went on a Valentine's date together. Oh yes. He wouldn't. He couldn't. He did it. Rat think. <laughs> Girls, you're still Wait. dating each other. You what know? are you about to do? I have a much better idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Dark Betty. Dark Betty. <laughs> we were thinking, what if you had us both at the, same at the exact time. same time Ooh. for a very, very special date? Ooh. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> no this more. horn dog. <laughs> Shop class. After hours, of course. <laughs> Why would we go there? <laughs> Don't you know? It's soundproof. And we plan on making a lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> and Lord Dong act Archie, of course, excited Come, about Archie. it. Join us. I really don't think I'm going to need a boost tonight. Now, now. No need to posture. You'll want all your energy for what we have planned. Promise. So we're Cross poisoning him. Have to die. Everything, Everything all right, right Archie? Archie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Good, good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> Welcome back, handsome. Oh, kinky. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, so we're gonna cut him in half. <laughs> oh, oh. Here, for the first time, Betty and Veronica are with their beloved Archie on the same night at the same time. Secure in the knowledge that they'll <laughs> never have to share him again. <laughs> Didn't I tell you he was a half-wit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. And, hmm. as easy as that. Whatever soap bubble Veronica and I had been in just burst. Lack of chemistry. Tomorrow yeah. at school, things would be different. Now you listen to me, kid. I don't know much, but I do know this. Girls come and go. With your name in print. Now that's a thing that'll make people sit up and take notice. Little did any of us imagine how prophetic Mr. Fieldstone's words would turn out to be. Oh, uh... Okay, guys, so that was the end of Season 7, Episode 5 of Riverdale. I honestly loved this episode. It was really good. I, you know, I I don't know if, if Jughead necessarily was trying to paint, uh, well, in all four cases, the women were the ones doing the killing right it was it was Cheryl then it was oh my dog is barking it was Cheryl then it was well then it was Betty the one who died right then it was uh well Cheryl, not not Cheryl, but Betty. 
Betty and, and Veronica. What? Weren't they four stories? Why am I thinking there were three? There were four. Ah, anyways. Thing is that um, I don't necessarily agree with... Oh, no, Dilton. Wasn't Dilton... Doyle? The killer? Ryan? On the first one? And then the other three? So I, I don't really see the point that Veronica was making. Um... Only maybe in the last one, but like I feel like, like stories like this ones are meant to be, you know, taken as as what it is, you know, comics which are very outside and very, you know, this blown out of pr proportion type of deals, you know. I did enjoy honestly the uh. The interactions between, you know, the first one with Doyle, where he beheads the entire uh, basketball team. I think it was it was pretty, you know, badass in the way it was done, you know, because it was like put your head in the game and he actually behead behead them and then throw the heads. And I think that I, I think that Riverdale has not been as gory and you know as 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 it was in during uh, this episode, which I find it um, actually good, I feel, you know? So, I kind of liked it in that regard, you know? Um, I think that it was... I think it was... I think it was good. I don't, I don't remember a time where they have been this gory. Honestly, with so much blood and things like that, I think it was it was it was pretty it was pretty damn badass, uh, in my opinion. Um, but you know, focusing on 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 the stories, like I said, I think Jarhead did a very good job. Uh, the bubble, whatever bubble you know there was between uh, Jarhead and Veronica, finally burst, and honestly, good riddance. <laughs> Because I am someone that I am I'm very tired of Veronica just seeking relationship after relationship and falling in love or having crushes all the time. And it feels like she can never be on her own. Yes, time and time again, her family dynamic is the one that involves and the the, the main reason, I guess you can say on why she is the way she is and why she, you know, kind of looks someone that resembles the relationship she had with her dad. So it's a, you know, bigger issue, but they have had seven seasons to work on that with Veronica. And instead, we keep just enabling that, you know, we keep just uh uh not com not confronting veronica for her ish for her issues and actually just you know consenting and just being okay with everything that she suppose everything that she's uh that she does you know she can't ever be single you know what i mean so i don't know i like i said i think that going back to the 50s and her being the badass one that doesn't need to settle down, that can do everything a man can do to prove it, you know, just like Tony is doing, you know, so, and I think it could have been the perfect op opportunity. Why? Because Veronica in the future is very independent in that regard. She does handle herself. She has a business. She's very smart. So, in the 50s, maybe she did not want to marry someone or wanted to have someone by her side at all times. You know what I mean? So, they have had, like I said, seven seasons to do that with Veronica. And they haven't done it. And that's what I don't like about the character. You know, it feels lazy, in my opinion. Now, the characters on this episode, you know, I feel like the actors just nailed it, every single one of them, 
uh, in, in what they were port portraying, you know, Veronica uh, as the, I don't know, femme fatale kind of thing, you know, and the last one with Archie and all, all, all of the characters on the comics. I think the actors were just doing their best work, you know, uh, especially, you know, um, KJ, um, he was just like, he is so like, we have seen him grow up. Right, we know he's no not the same kid he was on season one. Yet he has been able to bring that, you know, innocence back to Archie on this 1955 version of Archie, because he's not the same man he was. I mean, at the core he is, but he's like so excited and everything seems so wonderful and you know. So I am kind of like um happy that he would he has been able to do something like this you know because i think it's it's incredible right it, it, it is incredible and it's it's fantastic and he's really you know he's so talented and i have liked that you know despite the fact that he is back to himself being the the hormonal teenager the horn dog that he has always been uh well that he ha that he was during his high school years um but you know, I I I I've liked it. I liked uh, uh his work this season. I think he's doing one of his best works this season. You know, um, and I can totally see the difference between, you know, the Archie in the future, more mature. You know, ready to have a family, probably in love with Betty, all of that. You know, but like now he is just young and hanging out and like you know. So, I kind of like that a lot. I, I, I really do. Um, and yeah, you know, on, in this episode, uh, the characters that he play were, you know, the, the handsome one. The Don Juan kind of, you know, man. The ladies' man. And, like, he has always been that uh, uh, during high school. So, uh, it's understandable. <laughs> and I kind of like it, to be honest, you know. Uh, he did an amazing job. Uh, and they did an amazing job with the, with the stories and the way they played that play them. Good. Also, the fact that during the trailer, I saw Betty with her hairspray doing this. I was like, oh, here we go for another musical. They're gonna end it with a musical as well. They probably will, but it's not hairspray, you know. <laughs> so they're not gonna ruin that musical for me. <laughs> Uh, so they're doing, uh, uh, they, she was just, it was just part of this story. Um, and it was gruesome, right? She kept the bee, beehive and then a lot of spiders and it was just horrible and horrifying. I hate that he killed her, but like it, as a story, I think it was pretty, pretty gruesome and I, I kind of liked it, you know? Um... I mean, if you want to go in deep and thinking, oh, maybe Jughead still holds a grudge. But this Jughead has nothing to do with Betty. You know, nothing. They they introduce each other at the kissing thing that Veronica made. They had a, you know, they, they give each other a peck and that was it. You know what I mean? So this Jughead has no reasons to be upset at, at Betty, you know, um, or some residual anything, you know, um, so I am actually, um, glad, you know, that we were able to kind of hit a pause on the episodes and have this kind of like bottle episode that actually makes a lot of sense and resolves one thing that is the whole, oh, John, Han and Veronica look cute together. No, they don't. They don't have chemistry. They do not have chemistry. And like, if you think, oh, no, it has been built up and it could be a really good couple, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're not lying to yourself. I mean, everyone is entitled to ship whoever they want to ship and be, you know, okay with that. I mean, if you want to ship them, go ahead. I, you know, I ship Jughead and Tabitha. I believe that they are end game. I believe they love each other. And once this entire mess gets gets fixed, the one person he's going to come back to is Tabitha. Okay, that's just what it is. Sorry. So, 
good riddance that, uh, you know, uh, Jughead, not Jughead. Oh, yes, Jughead and Veronica are already over because I, I wouldn't stand them for another second. But we did hit a pause on the main story, which is like Archie coming down, seeing his, his uncle. He was about to go and like kind of like hang out with Betty, which I am excited for. We did got a Barchi kiss in this episode, but we also had a Varsh, Varshi kiss, like Varsh, I can't even pronounce it, you know, but we had a Veronica and, and Archie kiss as well, which is like, bleh, you know, but, um, yes, Archie and, and Betty, you know, dating and all of that, I mean, yes, granted, he was also dating Veronica, but it was a story, okay, <laughs> I get very defensive, but it was a really good bottle episode, like, Honestly, I'm not mad that it didn't follow this story, kind of. I mean, the the uh, principal, the psychiatrist, and the mayor are trying to figure out a way to get the parents to stop talking about the mock's murder, right? And so they, as in today's uh, uh, world, uh, people like to point out uh, violence on you know, um, uh, on teens and, like, young people, and they like to point out that this violence and why they do the things that they do, uh, and, like, things like that to video games. So before, of course, of course, it had to be comics, because comics are violent, you know, and all of that. So, of course, they're gonna blame it on that, but, you know, we know that that's not it, you know, so they have a plan, and now Jughead has written some of these things, so they're going to try to plan it as like, oh, Jughead is like motivating kids into committing murders or something like that. Something like that will happen, I I, I am sure, but like there there will be a link, That's those are the parts that we saw in the 1955 version of our characters. So, of course, something like that will be linked. Uh, you know, so, yeah. Anyways, um, like I said, I liked this episode. I enjoyed it very, 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 very much. And I can't wait for the next one, which is episode uh, six, which will premiere next week. Um, I'm about to watch the promo. If you are on Patreon... Go and check it out. Link in the description down, bo down below. I'm going to be doing my reaction video for the promo. And that is exclusively for members of my channel. I also did my Scream reaction. A Scream. The 1996. Uh, the first Scream movie reaction. And it's posted for my Patreon. No, not for my Patreon. Patreons have the uncut version. This is the edited version for YouTube. And it's for members of the channel. So, in case you guys want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, for now, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoy. hope you guys like it. And for now, that is all. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys next time for more reaction videos for Riverdale. That's it. Mwah. Bye, guys.